Good morning, guys, and welcome to FYI. For your information, it is the 25th day of September already. The month is done, folks. The month is done. Like the CPL, the month is over. We're happy that so many of you have joined us this morning. Those of you who are going to be coming back to watch our program as well, we ask you guys to share the live, smash that emoji button, folks. We got some ways to go. We got some ways to go this morning. It's another Monday morning, folks, a whole week. Is ahead of us and we hope that we all make the best of it that's our hope that we all make the best of it i'm good to see edward brooms on the live this morning of course continuously advocating that we keep sugate alive beatrice selby won't be left behind this morning i thought beatrice is here too beatrice and brandy anderson i see and john is here good to see you Anne and debbie apple pamela fontanelle is here as well folks it's uh, it's a it's a tad after eight is about uh, three to five minutes after eight o'clock we're happy to have you guys at this end wherever you're joining us from this morning uh, share the live smash smash that emoji button all of that folks helps to uh, drive the algorithm folks and help others to get credible and valid information as well if we didn't need it we wouldn't ask you <laughs> if we didn't need it folks we wouldn't ask you how was your weekend how was your weekend i had a Fantastic weekend. My lovely host, I took my wife and I for a little golfing, took us for a little golfing, and we had some fun there. Um, you know, my first, uh, my, 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 my debut into golfing, folks. I think I might like it. <laughs> I think I might like it. I got to work on my form, though. How was your weekend, folks? How was your weekend? Aubrey Stevens and Randy Cole, and I see we got, uh, uh, and John, Randy, how are you doing? Good to see you on the live this morning. Randy, trust you had a good weekend at your end, Randy. Uh, trust that you had a good weekend. And Randy's out of that uh, general area there in Conyers, Conyers, Georgia. Happy to have you on the live, Randy. Delighted, as a matter of fact, to have you and folks like Bella Mona, Stacey Ann Stoll. Stacey Ann says, we already shared the live. Well, we're happy for that. We're happy for that. For those of you who are now joining, we're going to advise you folks to do the same. Share the live. Smash that emoji button for us. And come, let me go down the road, folks. Let's go down the road. I see Daphne. Joseph Lee is here. Good to have you, Daphne. And the others who are joining us, uh, whether from the 592 or some of you are in the diaspora, you are in Region 11, wherever you're joining us from. Folks, folks, I am happy and I'm not happy at the same time. To let you folks know, this is going to be our final morning program uh, from this end here in South Carolina, the next time you guys are hearing from us uh, in the course of the morning, it should be, it should be, it should be from Washington, D.C. Our fingers are still, are still crossed. You know, you never know until you never know. When we're there, we're going to know we're in Washington. But our next morning show, we should be coming to you guys live from Washington, D.C. And if, you, if we are not on in the morning, tomorrow morning, this time, know that we are on our way and we haven't settled as yet. Just in case, just in case we have plans to uh, come live to you tomorrow morning with a morning show. But just in case we don't come live in our usual time, no, it's because we're in that process of getting to Washington, D.C. or settling in Washington, D.C., folks. So if we don't come live, you're going to forgive us. But you are going to hear from us during the course of the day tomorrow um, because we are going to be in the, in the capital, in the national capital city of the USA, Washington, D.C. We're going to be down there tomorrow. And so we're bidding farewell to South Carolina, our host, our hosts. Oh, they've, they've been so beautiful to us, folks. Bigly, bigly. They have been so beautiful to us. Um, and, and and as I said, it's bittersweet. We have to go, but we hate to go. You don't understand that, that kind of way? It's like when, when we were at Margaret's house. <laughs> I see Margaret on the live. We want to carry the whole house with us and Margaret and Rio. Live with everybody and fetch them up. <laughs> or at least stay a while longer. Good morning, Margaret and Rio and Ann Singh and all the other folks on the live. Good to see you folks at this end. Margaret says, Sharon, you're leaving us. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm leaving the South. <laughs> Margaret. Leaving the South for a little bit. For a little bit. June Cameron says, we outside. Good to have you, June and Pam Halls and all the other folks who are joining us. Good morning to all of the 
Amazon Warriors fans. Yep, yep, yep. All the Amazon Warriors fans. Good morning to you folks. And congratulations are in order. I value my mental health, my blood pressure, and so on. So I took it in doses yesterday. But for those of you who walked through it, Elizabeth and Raymond who walked through it, the match yesterday. <laughs> Elizabeth says some folks were screaming at the television. You know, congrats to you folks because... And that's one of the things we're picking up on this morning, good folks. One of the things we're picking up on this morning is quite quite a match yesterday. They tell us, as I said, I got it in I got it in doses. Y'all don't judge me. Got it in doses. I wanted to be in one. I wanted to be one piece for the morning show. Got it in doses. Well, congrats to the uh, Amazon Warriors fan. Um, and you know, there's a lot of fact there. You know, the launch on fact there. Andrew Griffith says, uh, good morning to the Trinidadian fans. <laughs> good morning to everybody. Except, except, just teasing there. Uh, Andrew's quite right. Big up the Trinidad fans. Big up, big up, big up. Quite a match. Quite a match on that front yesterday, folks. Quite a match. And we say congrats to all of you. I see some of y'all bail and left the Warriors early. Y'all weren't having it. Y'all bailed and left the Warriors very, very early. They were on their own from the get-go, y'all. Y'all didn't um, putting yourself out on the line to look thin. I understand. You know, we we understand all of those things. Y'all didn't put in, putting yourselves out there to look thin at all. And so y'all, y'all take first jump, as we say. <laughs> you take first jump, folks. We're trying to do some stuff on the fly here. Apologies. Um, and bring in some of the some of our graphic. Yeah, y'all took first jump, folks. Took first first jump. So one of the things we're tracking on the morning papers this morning, good folks, is that fantastic historic win. Historic win of the Amazon Warriors uh, yesterday out of the Providence Stadium. And if y'all watched us last week when we had uh, the other Randy on, uh, Randolph Kuchero, we walked through several of the very um, mind-boggling, damning things happening in national sports. And there were a lot of complaints. Substantive complaints. Not a little, little, little thing concerning the staging of CPL in Guyana. Some folks had some horrific experiences. And all goes to what we're doing at the national level as a country. And not being up to par for the staging of these international events. So all of you who watch the game... You had money in the game. You had skin in the game. One way or the other. I want to say congratulations to all of you. Uh, Helen, Collin, were, Helen Collins, were you following? Edward Brooms from the Bronx. Edward Gonzalez, rather, from the Bronx. Were you following? Where's Edward Brooms this morning? Dolly Anderson, were you following? Kamal Passat, were you following? Yeah, 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 yeah. Kamal says, good morning to all those. Good morning to everyone except all of those who bashed Hetty, Hetty Meyer. All those who bashed Hetty Meyer. Congrats to the Ghana Amazon Warriors for a superb win. Zero points for those who always bashing Hetty Meyer. That's the Region 7 Vice Chair Kamal Prasad on that front uh, saying that um, good morning to all of those except you all who bashed Hetty Meyer. <laughs> I take it in doses. So I'm neither here nor there. I tell you, a very long time ago, when I saw this um, demise of the of West Indian cricket, West Indies cricket, I took a position, you know what? I can catch you highlights. <laughs> I should me in my house. We can catch you highlights. <laughs> so all of you who were very, very invested there, congrats to you folks. Some of you had the gumption, you had the tenacity, you stuck with the boys. As Kamal is saying, you see, you weren't here, there, and everywhere. Hats off to you guys and congrats. Gil Ali Cox says, I enjoyed the game. Well, I'm happy you did. I am happy you did. Margaret Stewart, we see you there, Margaret. Kishan, Sharma Ramjadan, we see you, Kish uh, Kishan. We see Vanessa, Joanne Seeley's with us this morning. And Fidel Innes is here, so too. We got Glory Chester with us, too. And I, again, again, again. <laughs> Randy Cole says, I was betting on whoever wins. 
My kind of guy there. My kind of, I would bet whoever wins. <laughs> so again, big, big congrats to the Amazon Warriors. I saw they had, I think, eight wickets in hand, eight or nine. Right? Eight or nine wickets in hand. Um, but you know, folks, you know, we can parse this a lot of ways. Right? We can parse this a lot of ways. You can look at it from the standpoint of whether the Amazon Warriors were that good. Will Felix, Lennox Anderson, we can look at it from the point of view of whether the Warriors were that good, Tommy Gibbs and Alwyn and Sabino, or, or our neighbors were that bad. It, it all came crashing down very, very fast. Vesta Hardy, Rashkumar for the Trinidadians. Very, very fast. Savannah Page. I didn't expect the defenses were going to fall so quickly. Very, very quick. So it wasn't a lot of work for the Amazon Warriors, really and truly, because the Trinidadians really and truly, <laughs> you know, caved and crumbled. I see Alvin Austin says, Trinidad had a final taste of the curry chicken. <laughs> a final taste of the curry chicken. Yeah, yeah. But a win is a win. A win is a win. I see Kamal was not agreeing with me. I think he's on the point whether the Warriors were that good. Right? Or the riders just didn't ride him properly. You know? Just didn't ride him properly. Right? But the curry chicken, we know conclusively what it is. The superior. <laughs> a win is a win. So the curry chicken will be the superior product. Who vex vex? Who vex vex? Curry chicken it is, folks. Curry chicken it is. And you know, like our show, there is this show that's happening here. And then there's a show in the comment. <laughs> there's the show that's happening here. Andrew Thornton. Andrew Griffith and Singh. There's this show. Then there's the show at the bottom. The show in the comments. That's happening as well. Good morning to Elizabeth Narine. Good morning to uh, Raymond Narine. Wonderful folks, I tell you. Wonderful folks. Uh, thanks for all of your love, your support, and your own generosity. Thank you guys so much for your, hosp for your southern hospitality, Elizabeth and Raymond Narine. Out of front part says hello, Dolly. Good morning. <laughs> hello, Dolly. Veronica Primo Rollins is watching. So good morning. So while there was the match happening, you know, while there was your show that was the CPL, you had the other show happening as well. It's what we like about about the game. You know, so many dimensions, multifaceted. We saw these beautiful young ladies. With this uh, poster, banner, you know, call it what you may. You make under pressure. Same way, Ministry of Education got teachers under pressure. Now you know the whole story, really. We don't, we have to add anything else. You see, you get one sentence. You know the whole story. Kyle Bino, Dolly Anderson, Lauren Jones. I love that name, Lauren. I think I tell you that a million times. You see that one sent that one phrase, that one placard, that one poster. You know the whole book. Jamaica under pressure. Same way, Ministry of Education got teachers under pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Ingrid Ambrose says, "Mighty rising to you, Sherrod and all." Take them a spirit, Ingrid. Mighty rising. I love that. You started the energy like that. Nobody can hold you. Mighty rising. Folks, a very good morning to each and every one of you. Welcome to FYI. If you're now joining us, uh, share the live. Smash, smash, smash that emoji button as well. Don't get us out here looking tin. Debbie Collins says she's hearing us loud and clear. Savannah Page, how about you? Paul Charles. Is here as well, folks. It's another day, another Monday, another week. We outside, we out here. 
You know, next time you see us in the morning like this, we'll be outside in Washington, folks. So we're packing up, about to move shop down to that side to bring you the latest on that Washington conference on Guyana. My top of teachers there too. And what's happening with our teachers, what's happening with our public servants and, you know, uh, a raise of pay. Seems like everybody else getting money but public servants. But public servants. So <laughs> these young ladies in their own creative way, beautiful young ladies in their own creative way. They said the, the Jamaicans are under pressure like teachers. <laughs> like Guyanese teachers under pressure. Pressure bus pipe. The old folks say, pressure make water go uphill. <laughs> pressure, pressure. Folks, again, for all of those of you who are now joining us, welcome to our humble broadcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome to FYI. For your information, it's done the 25th of August. So if you are pursuing anything, you better pick up the pace. You better pick up the pace. Folks, you better pick up the pace. We give you guys a sec to share the light, to smash up that emoji. But let's know how you're feeling out there this morning. You're happy, you're sad, you're in between. You know, if you find any value in the content we have here this morning, let us know, good folks. We want to know. We want to know. We got a lot of bad things in the 592 we're following. But I want to say good morning to, I see Naomi Jock is here finally. Good to have you, Naomi, on the live. <laughs> Right? Naomi says even the Trini team get the money. Everybody get the money. But public servants. And all you hear is excuses, excuses, excuses. You see? Excuses all the time. Even Princess Hotel. Go and get money now. And teacher's still waiting. We can talk about that too. Even the Princess Hotel. Getting money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kishan Sharma says, Naomi swimming. <laughs> you swim out here, you swim in Naomi. <laughs> Fernandez, good to have you. Sonia Massey Cobb. Sonia, how are you doing? Looking forward to seeing you in a couple hours, Sonia. All things being equal. Looking forward to seeing you. Sonia Massey Cobb on the live this morning. Good to see you, Sonia. Good to see you, Margaret, Allison, Andrews. Naomi Druck is here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Naomi Drucker says, uh, uh, even Princess Hotel will get money in that order. Yeah? Is everybody else but the public servant in Guyana? That's just what we're following this morning, good folks. But I want to turn our attention very early, very early, to some of the other things we're tracking, picking up. In the 592 this morning, good folks, we want to turn our attention to some of those other things we're tracking in the 590. So much to cover. Because something's always happening. Something is always happening. And and if we pull in the international affairs this morning, what's happening in the region? You go way over time. What's so happening on the ground in the 592? Let's start with the editorial folks out of the fabric news. You see, I tell you all these things, especially the PVP supporters who come on the live this morning, trying to get some incredible information. Especially those who if we tell you these things, you know, it's the PNCR, it's the, it's the AFC, right? It's the new nation, it's the key. It's the WPA. It's the rabble rousers. It's the usual suspects. All manner of things. That's why we picked up Sabbat News. Who itself is trying to give you a snapshot of what's happening? In our country, they don't take our word for it. Other people are of similar views. You know, last week we focused on the Exxon scandal, we focused on the national sports scandal, we focused on something that's, that, that are, are still emerging, we're still analyzing the half year financial report of the PVC administration. And this morning, Sabbath News in its editorial helping us on the health. Care front. Sabbath News camping on the healthcare front, doing its due diligence, pursuing the truth like that fourth estate should. Pursuing the truth 
wherever it leads. Number two is taking a broad look at the health sector. Broad look at health care. Reverend Elizabeth Nerain. And pulls out some of what is happening currently in that sector. That leaves us all wondering what is really happening. What is really happening? First off, they point to this issue with this young woman who got some bad treatment at the Georgetown Public Hospital quite recently. Disrespect and mistreatment, according to Sabbath News editorial. And she was there for a routine laparoscopic procedure to remove an ovarian cyst. You know, I really and truly commiserated our women vote because they got so much they go through you know so much simple procedure routine laparoscopic procedure to remove an ovarian cyst well who tells you for do that disrespect and mistreatment disrespect and mistreatment Sabak News says here, among the questionable care decisions was the hospital switching at the last moment from a minimally invasive to an open procedure. Elizabeth, Raymond, minimal invasive, minimally invasive to an open procedure. In the main, the behavior of the nurses in the maternity surgical ward ranged from dismissive to callous. Folks, that's the health sector. Who vex, vex? We got put in the pipe and smoke it. This is the reality. And this is what that young woman said. I believe that a lot of patients' deaths are not caused by the procedures they undergo, but rather the lack of proper aftercare from the nurses in charge. The so public servants have their parts to play as well. While I understand that wages may not be attractive, Pim Pim, while you understand wages may not be attractive, nurses have taken a note to take care of all patients. So all of us have our roles to play. Nurses have taken a note to take care of all patients. That's what the young lady who endured this uh, mistreatment, endured the disrespect at the GPHC, told Stanford News. Sabbath News goes on to say in this editorial, this is but one of the testimonies of the heartless and unprofessional treatment meted out to patients. The newspapers go on to say, also to be navigated by patients are the unsanitary and on the staff facilities, misdiagnosis and incorrect application of potent medicines. Yeah. So while you got callousness and so on from the nurses, you got to be on the lookout for unsanitary, unstaffed, understaffed facilities, misdiagnosis, incorrect application of potent medicines. And I don't know if they're gonna be some like hot roche and can. Who's going to say, oh, it's, it's up new. Three years in. It's up new fault. It's up new fault. And in this editorial, trying to move quickly now. Have a news points out what Shirley Scott, Councillor Shirley Scott, out of Region 6, NDC, pointed out. It's happening at the Skeldon Hospital on that side. And their own dose of callousness and mistreatment. Shirley Scott pointed that out to the RDC. You know, that's the job of the councillor. Thank you, Shirley Scott. That is the job of a councillor. We're going to go on the ground, see what's happening with the people. You might not be able to remedy everything because these folks, you know, try to put a drink in the in the armor, cock in the wheel. But you're listening and you're bringing representation. 
to the council. And that is what we saw Councillor Charles Scott doing there in the Region 6. RDC. Telling one and all, what is transpiring? Just in case you all haven't been seeing, what is transpiring at the Skeldon Hospital? And I want to say, we salute you, Councillor Scott. In addition to that, in this editorial, Temperate News again points out damning revelations about the Skeldon Hospital from Jam Tan, a writer in the daily newspapers who pointed out a series of shortcomings. I think this was at the New Amsterdam Hospital, shortages of doctors and nurses. Right? Poor doctor communication and attitude, atrocious patient care. This is Jem Khan pointing out tennis shoes at the Skeldon Hospital as well. The editorial goes on. Oh, it's required reading today. The editorial goes on to talk about treatment method out to a 22-year-old patient, Prasanna Khan, at the New Amsterdam Hospital. And according to the paper here, the 22 year old suffered a heart attack. She was a paralyzed a young lady who suffered a heart attack. Here, here her mother said, her aunt, Shemisa Khan, right? Prasanna Khan's aunt, Shemisa Khan said, she came in Saturday and I took her to New Amsterdam Hospital. And when we went there, there were no doctors at the outpatient, and we had to wait for over two hours. That's just part of the litany of woes pointed out in today's editorial by Sabbath News, captioned, very poor care. So we may want to run around and talk about little Dubai and embarrass myself. We may want to run about and talk about, you know, biggest GDP, fastest growing economy, high income country, to make ourselves feel nice. But the reality is on the ground. The proof of the pudding, as we say, is in eating, Kamal. We love if we had some positive news to share with you guys and think we share as much as we can there. Congrats to the Amazon Warriors. Oh, we got some problems at home. We got to fix right at the Providence Stadium. We don't have to go far. Right at the Providence Stadium. We have some issues to fix. Right there. We don't have to go far. And as we on Sabbath News, you know, Sabbath News has been doing this weekly, this weekly um, series of articles. How is the cost of living affecting Guyanese? Has been Sabbath news. That is what we share with you. And they tend to put out this article every Monday during the 42nd week of asking Guyanese how the cost of living treating you all. Constant Alexander, Yolanda Thomas, Paris Calder, Eula Lachman and Rubens, Noel Harding, what it costs to live in? Treating you all. Tony Fraser, Debbie Collins, what it costs to live in treating you? Again, folks, we picked up on this. We understand, we know how it costs to live in treating our Guyanese brothers and sisters. But when we say, them guys like say we bad talking the government because there's opposition. But we just stay, like Charlotte Scott, that excellent councillor in Region 6, what the facts are. But you see, the truth hurts, you know. Kamal Pasad, Yvette Moore, Jun Cameron, and the truth hurts, you know. The truth is hurt some people. And we'll just give you guys a snapshot of what some of those folks told Sabbath News about how the cost of living 
is affecting them. We're going to give you a, a, just, just a quick snapshot of what some folks said the Sabbath news on that front. Quickly, slips, quickly, swiftly. The folks had a lot of things to say. We will take the whole morning show just delivering this content to you about what folks told Sabbath news in this article. Francine Bobbill. That's the cost of living is affecting my family and I since everything gone up. Everything gone up in the market, Francine Bobbill says. And the salary has not risen. Right? I'm a family of six persons. And everyone is working for the cost of living still affecting us. Folks, have a spoken about 10, 15 persons in this one article. And I'll just give you first and foremost, none of them said they were unbothered by the cost of living. None of them said the cost of living wasn't affecting them, including Francine Bobbill. All of them go on to talk about how the various um, increasing prices for commodities in the market are affecting their daily lives. And that was Francine. That's Francine Bubble. Colwyn Taylor, the man in the middle. He's a grocery vendor. He said the cost of living not only affected me, but everyone across the country because every day the prices of items in the market going up. The salary is not going up. And when I'm purchasing items to sell back to my customers, the items are expensive. That's what Col Colwyn Trevor says. The items are expensive. I don't know if you are living in the same economy. If at more, Margaret Nelson, stays here and so. You all have a similar experience? Troy Fraser, Stephanie King, you all have a, a similar experience? And finally, finally, I don't want to detain us here all morning, because it's very important, the cost of living affecting people. Finally, Nestlin Waterman, a 68-year-old pensioner. Nestlin says, my extended family and I live together. We would share the cost of the utility bills, but carry the grocery cost for our individual family. My siblings are working except me. I would use my pension to buy grocery for my family. My mother used to help, but she died recently. So it's just me and the cost of living is affecting me since the cost for some food items have gone up. This is heavy on me when buying groceries every week for my family of three. This is what Nestlin Waterman says. Folks, nobody in this article said the government is doing well with concerns the cost of living. Nobody. And as I said, about 10 to 15 persons were interviewed by Starbuck News. Not New Nation, not the key. Influence by the cost of living. So all this nice time and little Dubai, Karen McPherson, and it comes in. So people talking about, we don't know where it's happening, but we're not feeling it. As a people, as a country, we're not feeling it. And again, Starbuck News here is just giving us a snapshot, again, of how the cost of living affects people. How the cost of living affecting people. And this is real. This is not made up. Folks, we're privileged to have over a thousand of you watching us live around the world. And we want more persons to get valid and credible information. So why are we asking you all to support us financially? We've got all of those uh, platforms available, Cash Up and Zell and PayPal. Even if you have a debit or credit card, we have the facility that you can contribute to our program via those platforms. Uh, shoot us a link and we'll uh, tell you how. While you're doing that, folks, we want you guys to share the live as well. We want others to get this is valid, credible, unbiased information. It's just what's happening in the country out there. Malice is paste and power. 
Margaret Nelson says it's a crying shame, especially when you have to make a decision if one should buy food or pay the bills. And Margaret, that is the circumstance of so many Guyanese. So many Guyanese. I can pay the light bill or we can buy tennis shoes. You know, we can pay the rent or we can eat for another week. Decisions, decisions, decisions. And this is some of what our Guyanese brothers and sisters are faced with. You see? So when your family back home write your call and say things tight, oh, breast happy, they're lying. They're not lying at all. When they say things tight, breast happy. That's a snapshot. And again, it's not we saying it, you know. It's not us saying it. Another very important things are happening at our end in the 592. Last week, we started to chronicle the saber rattling by the Venezuelans. We started to chronicle that. The saber rattling by Vice President Jack Neward. Recently concluded talking about the auctioning or um, and the low bids that were received for some of the oil blocks there. You know, they're not having a good time on that front, but that's one thing by itself. And not sooner he finished talking about that, the Venezuelans said they're not recognizing what's happening there and that we should put a halt to that. They have the gumption and the temerity because we're operating illegally. In disputed territory. These are the folks who they want to go before the ICG concerning the disputed territory. But they run out to lecture us. You see, they, they smell blood in the water, they smell weakness, and they run out. But they better run in back. Flick in, hop in, swim in. Run in back. You better run in back. The only silver lining here is that the same air fan who said that Aubrey could pick up his phone, lead up the opposition, Aubrey Norton, and call him. He ended up picking up his phone and said, because the situation is so grave. The situation is so grave. They tell us that the ambassador to um, the, the, Venezuelan amb um, um, the Venezuelan ambassador has been summoned. To explain why his country is going to a referendum concerning this border issue. But the ambassador from Caracas summoned. So this is a quickly, rapidly evolving situation. And it's not evolving with beauty and grace. It is not rapidly evolving with beauty and grace. And so, Air Finale was forced over the weekend to call the leader of the opposition and brief him on this fast-moving event. So that has been the only, the only silver lining out of this. That we have this unifying support at the top on our approach to Venezuela. And that is saying that this thing here is we own. Don't come wrong we funny, Venezuela. Don't come wrong we funny. At all. That's a silver lining here. And so, Ephraim Ali who said that um, Norton is no God, and he don't have to reach out to him. <laughs> I remember a message by Pastor Preach. Years ago, he said, Father could create some issues in your life. Forget attention, you know. <laughs> I don't have to reach out to him. He is not caught. Them Venezuelans said, rattling the same. Hello, Aubrey. Aubrey, I need some help, boy. Um, what do you think about what, what, what happened here? I 
don't understand his politics, but we factor out God. I don't factor out God out of my politics. In him I live. I move. I have my being. Don't factor him out at all. So the man run and pick up his bow. Quick, quick, quick. Aubrey, Aubrey, Aubrey. You want your handshake now? Take the same man and pick up your phone. But I'm happy. I'm happy. Sharon Belgrave said, you reach out now. You run out, you reach out. Sometimes Sarah comes and stands and give you a chance to run out, swim out, hop out. He reach out. And I'm happy. I am happy. You see? To see this. Margaret says, land giving out left, right, and center to foreigners. Now we ball in. It's true. It's true. So at least, but I wonder. Why we want the Venezuelans come wrong with funny? I wonder if Airfun taking this matter seriously. I wonder if Airfun taking this matter seriously. Listen, when you're in these heated situations of international proportions and implications, everything you do is a message you're sending, your posture. And I wonder if Irvin's serious. And I saw Irvin, like many of you, give a statement of this issue over the weekend in which he was informing us that he reached out to leader of the opposition, Mr. Aubrey Norton, on this matter. I wonder if he's serious about the issue. You know, in appearance on social media, Begs the question, is Ali taking this serious? Is Ali present in this moment? You would never see the chicken curry people addressing a national issue with this posturing. Ali in a shirt, sleep a in a shirt, and you get a cell phone in your hand. Rumbling through something. Is Ali out of his mind? Is he out of his mind? A little Titan sweet shot and he ran out. Now, if you're at an event, you remember 911? George Bush was speaking to some preschool students. Uh, when 9-11 happened and you saw in real time the secret service took a message to him so this has been a situation evolving since last week while ali was in the un so this isn't catching by surprise he went golfing and somebody pushed a bike in the face and said oh the venezuelans just issued a statement what do you say mr president he prepared a statement and went out there in public he got down a scar, sleep scar, but he going to a barbecue. A cell phone in the hand, rummaging two notes. Right? If one got with these, he can't stand up and give a statement behind a podium. Huh? He goes for memory. What do you need for your knees? You need something for your bones. Some calcium or something. The ankles thin. When you're conducting international relations, posture matters. This is Airfan talking to the diaspora last week. He's in Canada, wherever he ran out to. You know, he, was in, he was in New York last week. From Washington, he was in New York for the 98th uh, General Assembly, United Nations General Assembly meeting there. And you get full marks for your comportment, right? for your sartorial, you get full marks. Right? You turn up. And you look at who you turn up to do business on behalf of the Guyanese people. But over the weekend, over the weekend, folks, I was looking for a photograph. I didn't find it, but I'm gonna find it. And I'll show you the difference. Right? I'll I'll show I saw him got it to up right now. I saw him got it to up right now. 
But I'll get a chance to talk about it later on when we talk about what happened to Princess. If you think this was bad, well, Airborne crawl out for Princess. I don't know what they're doing on the scenes of these fighters. Besides, hampering the progress of the firefighters. Right? But Airborne and Jackie, you crawl out together and give Jackie jacket. You would never see Jack Dio showing up as though he's going to walk his dog in the backyard. Airplane never the slippers. If I can't look at you under a lot of pressure, you understand why he's sitting down? Jack Dio's company, Jack Dio has on a shirt at whatever hour the rustle Jack Dio out of some little hole. He got on a shirt, a sock, pants, and shoes. He even got on a slippers with the ankle pat, 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 like, like he expecting. The ankle is the only thing I'm gone down in this, this um, surgery that he had in Dubai. Right? The ankle is the only thing I'm gone. You got to show up. First thing, I don't know what they're doing there. I don't know what they're doing there. He got on a slipper, a little tight and sweet shirt, cell phone in, in the hand. What is he doing there? He won't be president. He won't be fire chief. He won't. What are you doing there? But we can come to that just now. So he rolled out over the weekend. He is addressing the nation on one of the most serious issues that we contend with historically. And he just rolled out in a, in a, in a little tight and sweet shirt. He sat down at the table, he folded his hand, and he's flipping through some notes. Not ready for prime time. You gotta show up, Irfan. You gotta show up for this walk every day, every day, every day. You can run in by Jack you now. You got on a tie, a shirt, you dress shoes, and a dress pants. Ready and waiting. Ready and waiting. And then and and Irfan keep embarrassing himself all the time. Plus, I know we doing a defile. But that being said, let's wrap up this discussion, this aspect. So they summoned the ambassador um, from Caracas as to this national referendum on our territory. This matter was concluded years ago. But they wake up one day and decide we can save a rattle. And they've been teaching their children in school. This land belongs to me. Fake news. False information. And then we show up nationally. Like we iffy. Like if we're serious. And when we're supposed to be. Arrogant and so on. We're not arrogant. We're not arrogant then. We got to show up. In respect. You walk, show up. In show up. That's another story. Are we going to circle back to this? Right? It's the poor engagement in New York. Full mark. Full mark. For the way he showed up. But over the weekend, on the Venezuela border dispute. Uh uh. Uh uh. Fires of the PPP. Oops. Since the Princess Fire, over the weekend, he had about two. Now we can see her in this evening, but I want to focus on Princess. We had about two since then. He's telling us this fire occurred on the fourth, the fourth floor of the Princess Hotel. Next door to the National Stadium with the um, Warriors were playing. I know one of y'all are trying to cook on the floor. You know, I check went home to the thing. There's a catfish they're trying to cook on the floor every day. How much of we have we have a daily fight now? A daily accident book. Every day. Well, I don't know what's in the hotel. 
We don't need oranges. Says as a room and fourth floor. Room and fourth floor. The princess of my this is over the weekend. A very short clip. Some of what we saw over the weekend at the Princess Ramada. Let's go. Good job. Good job. We have anybody more than the sixth floor? A lot of people up here. A lot of people up here. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We can't do it anymore. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you. Got you, bro. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Everybody lock it up. That is some of what we saw happening at Princess uh, Hotel on Providence over the weekend as the fire broke out on the fourth floor. They're telling us that about 13 to 15 persons had to be rescued. And we saw some photographs of bed sheets, linen tied together. As persons were attempting to repel down the outside of the building. Right? To repel down the outside of the building. And reports are from that area, there have been a lot of damage, of course, from the fire, the intervention by the fire service. Thankfully, nobody perished in that fire. But extensive damage, they tell us has been done to that hotel. Extensive damage has been done every day, week of the year. You got fire. A small country like ours, it just leaves much to be desired. And again, I say, you know, thanks to the work of the Ghana Fire Service, they responded. They showed up. And thankfully, uh, there were no loss of lives. I think this was on Saturday night. No loss of lives. Thankfully, thankfully. But some other people show up too. Some other people show up. Some other folks showed up as well. Some other people showed up as well. If and show up, I know what we're doing there. Yeah, some other folks showed up as well. I don't know what, what they're doing there. Airplane show up. He's crime chief. Kwame show up. He's a firefighter. Right? Jack Dio show up. Right? I don't know. I, I, saw, I saw Onage show up as well. Now when you show up, head of state, you come in with 20 bodyguards. You can be impediment. You don't know if it's a crime scene. What is happening there? Now the fire service got to navigate you and 40 bodyguards. What is this madness? A whole set of them run out. So much has happened. Was it Saturday night? I'm trying to get the, the date right. A whole pack of them run out. Folks, we got to do so much better. We got to do so much better. And I'm sorry I don't have that specific photograph I want to show you. But we can circle back to it later on. But we got to address how we go about firefighting. If the fire service got to think about 40 government officials who are going to run out on the ground because they want these photo ops. Like you're doing the most. How do you contend with the blaze? They got one about you and your safety. And contend with the blaze as well. And contend with the blaze as well. We, we, we got to catch myself, you know. We really got to catch myself. And we're going to circle back to some of this in our other broadcasts. Fires. Of the PPP. A whole set of them. Run out. 
So, Ramada Princess, what are they doing there? Onage and Kwame. No, they ain't got a bucket in hand, you know. They ain't got a bucket in hand. But they're on the ground doing the most. <laughs> this is the next firefighting brigade coming in here now. What's happening? Where we there? Huh? Where we there? Good folks. Where we there? Doing the most. <laughs> Doing the most. What's I can say? Doing the most. So we go through photo apps. We go through photo apps. There's there's reliance. Right? There's reliance. It's not the substance. It's just the form. But again, these folks apart, congrats to the Ghana Fire Service for their own efforts and the folks who were um, pulled from that inferno. They said about 15 persons needed to be rescued. Congrats to them. To these others, you have to see all the people we're in the man. Neon Harding says bodyguards more than firemen. It's better they pull holes instead. Neon, you're absolutely right. Bodyguard more than firemen. Bodyguard more than firemen. That's the foolishness. We got to put up with. Bodyguard more than firemen. I think you said it right. You capture the essence of the thing there. Better they pull a hose. Better they pull a hose. Folks, unfortunately, that is where we are. That is where we are this morning. And that's such a snapshot of some of the things we're following. Just a snapshot. Yep. Snapshot, folks. Before we let you guys go, a couple of the other things which we're tracking. You know, this our economy. People doing all kinds of side hustle. Side hustle turning main hustle. Two arrested, 12.5 pounds of ganja. That's not recreational use. That's not medicinal purpose. You're trafficking 12 pounds of marijuana. You're exporting. You're exporting. Venezuelan woman killed in Region 7. Kids came home from school and found her lifeless body there. Police are investigating that. You know, she shared a relationship with someone she was living with. Police are investigating all angles how she came to her demise. Yeah, three kids came home from school and found the mother's lifeless body in the kitchen there. Kai Khan. Beautiful place. Terrible incident, Venezuela national. So, Roshan Khan saying that the blackouts, constant blackouts. You see, he blamed Ramjatan's AFC for blackouts. Folks who know, know. Long the last government, blackouts became a thing of the past. Blackouts became a thing of the past. These boys came in, they bring back um, Dindial, Bar Dindial, who they recommend be fired. Now Dindial is out, they bring Anil brother, Prem. And we see problem. The coalition, they say, is to be blamed for the constant blackouts. Because we in power, eh? for the last few years, apparently. We in power. A bit of good news, the University of Ghana Student Society launched a website. They said it's going to cater for the person. So, lodge your complaints. You know, issues affecting you across the campus. Kudos to all. University of Ghana Student Society, where I once had the privilege of serving as president. Yeah. Once I had the privilege of serving as president. Ganesh Mai Paul also was president of the UGSF. Norman McLean, 
years ago was President of UGSS. You know, kudos to the folks there making a difference in the University of Ghana. Students decided, yes, I went to university, I followed second year. I didn't follow some of the issues with tracking folks that we can circle back to in our next broadcast, especially the fire one. I really want to circle back to that, folks. Before you run off, folks, before you run off, before you run off, before, before you run off, the next time we see you guys in the morning like this, we're going to be coming live from Washington, good folks. The next time we see you all like this, right? Part with us. So we can keep bringing you guys valid, credible information. It costs something to be out here bringing you guys valid, credible information. We want, it's, it's our passion. Please and thank you. It's our passion doing this. And I really want to ask you guys to come on board and help us. We got a couple of challenges. You know, you don't always want to come out with all your problems to people. We got one or two challenges. But I want to invite you folks to partner with us so we can continue doing this. Right? And we always leave it up to you guys to determine whether you want to send $5, 10 15 Look, some folks hit us. They say we're begging for money. You can't do this without money. Right? The sad part of this is that we don't have advertisers because people understand how them boys like to victimize. So when they see them giving us funding in relation to advertising a business or a product or so on, they go after people. And so that is the downside. But politics takes money to fund. To keep pursuing the truth wherever it leads takes money to fund. And so you guys know we run Cash Up and Zelle and PayPal, MMG MoneyGram, Western Union. Um, we also have a facility, folks, to accept your credit and debit cards uh, towards um, a contribution to our program. Hit us up on our WhatsApp. We haven't changed it. 627-6963. That's our main and only recognized WhatsApp uh, medium for our program, 627-6963. Hit us up there, and we'll tell you how you can partner with us. We continue to value uh, your support. We continue to value your generosity. And we thank you guys for your love. You know, November is three years. We're out here, folks, fighting the good fight. We're going to see you guys on the next broadcast, on our next morning program. If we're not on tomorrow morning, you'll know that we're either heading to the capital here in the U.S. of A, or we're settling in. And getting things set to bring you um, the latest out of the Washington conference on Guyana. You know them boys trembling with that one. Are we going to bring you the latest on that front? I know also some of our uh, parliamentary colleagues are heading into a meeting with uh, Hakim Jeffries, Congressman Hakim Jeffries, Minority Leader of Congress Hakim Jeffries, on, uh, on the 26th as well, on Wednesday as well. And those two things are happening in tandem. You have the conference on the Washington Conference on Guyana at the same time, that meeting is happening and we want to bring you all, 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 all of that. It's going to cost a tidy penny to do that. And so we invite you guys, share the live, smash that emoji button, folks, and partner with us as well. Thanks for joining our broadcast this evening. Until next time, until the next broadcast, stay safe. Stay safe, good folks. Good to see all of you on the live. Ingrid King, Horace, and Annette, Veronica Primo Rollins, Maureen Williams, Sharon Castle Edwards, Ingrid King, good to see all of you on the live. Have a great rest of the day and see you soon.